Verse 37 says, in all these things we are more than conquerors. But how do I get to being more than a conqueror? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Death is before life. Death is before victory. My brother, when you hang on that cross and stay on that cross, you'll defeat all the powers of hell. You understand there is no way to experience victory without death. Satan offered Jesus a crossless life more than once. In Matthew 16, when Jesus said, Whom do men say I am? Lord, Peter spoke, you're the Christ, the Son of God. The man was, uh, was anointed. Peter was anointed to actually know by revelation, this is the Messiah. And Jesus said, flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father. And the next thing you see, he looks at Jesus and says, after the Lord had said to him, I'm going to the cross. No, not you, Lord. You're not going. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You know what is so shocking? The enemy came first on the mount of the temptation and said to Jesus, I'll give you the, I'll give you the world. You don't need to go to the cross. Just worship me, I'll give it to you. You don't have to die. I'll give you the world and the glory of the nations. You don't have to receive a thing by going to the cross. All you got to do is just bow before me and I'll give it to you for free. And Jesus said, no. Get behind me, Satan. Then the devil said, well, since he refused me, maybe I'll use Peter. I'll use his closest friend. So Peter says, Lord, no, no, not you. You're not going to the cross. Get behind me, Satan. He says that again. And while Jesus was on that cross, they said, if you're the son of God, come off that cross. That's the third time the devil offers him a crossless life. Listen to me, my brother. Listen to me, my sister. Just like the devil offered Jesus a crossless life, he'll offer you the same. He'll tell you, I'll give it to you. You, do, you don't have to die. No, no, my friend. There's no shortcuts. If you want to live victoriously, it's only through the cross. And the Bible tells us in Romans 6, 6, we are to share in his death. In Galatians chapter 5, it also tells us the same. In Galatians 2, 20, it tells us the same. I am crucified with Christ, it says. We are commanded to share in his death. When we decide to live this kind of life, the battle really begins. Psalm 118.27 says, Bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horn of the altar, which means sanctification is an ever increasing participation in the Lord's death. It's the only place Satan cannot touch you. The only place you're safe is on that cross. Listen to me. 
Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. The devil offered him three times a crossless life. And Jesus said, no. No shortcuts. What the devil offered him, he'll offer you. My brother, my sister, there's two ways. The devil's way or God's way. The devil's, the devil's way will bring complete destruction. God's way will bring victory. Choose the cross. Choose God's way. Deny self. Say no to the flesh. Let the old man die and stay dead. We must participate in his death. Romans 6, 6, Galatians 2, 20, and other scriptures. And the Bible tells us something most remarkable. Listen to this. We all want uh, to be conquerors. We all want to have victorious lives. Listen to what the Bible has to say. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, or depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ. Wait a minute. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He asks, shall tribulation... Distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Now you think he'll jump right over to verse 37 and says, Nay, in all these things we're more than conquerors. No, he doesn't. Right between the question and the answer is the cross. Listen to what I'm telling you. He asks a question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ he asks shall tribulation how about distress how about persecution how about famine how about nakedness or peril or sword now he could have jumped straight over to verse 37 and said nay in all these things were more than conquerors but he doesn't why because paul the apostle by the spirit knows the only way to conquer is through calvary that's why verse 36 is right in the middle verse 35 says who will separate us from the love of christ Distress, tribulation, nakedness, peril, sword. Verse 37 says, in all these things we're more than conquerors. But how do I get to being more than a conqueror? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Death is before life. Death is before victory. My brother, when you hang on that cross and stay on that cross, you'll defeat all the powers of hell. The devil cannot touch you when you're on that cross. You see, my brother, you see, my sister, that's why he said, if you're the son of God, come off that cross. Why? Because he knew. As long as Jesus was on that cross, he was safe. As long as you stay on your cross, you'll be safe. But never forget. Oh, yes, give the Lord a mighty hand. He deserves it. Come on, Cheryl, come on. The cross 
produces conquerors. How many here want to be conquerors over sin? Come on. Lift your hands way up high, way up high. He said, sin shall not have dominion over you. But when did he say it? After he said what? You know, we all want sin to not have dominion over us. But before that happens, he said, let not sin reign in your mortal body. Don't obey it. Don't yield your members to sin. Verse 13 says, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead. And only then he promises sin shall not have dominion over you. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can you say no to sin if you have no strength to say no to sin? There's only one answer. I'll show it to you. One answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. I said, that's the answer. Do you remember the old song? What a friend we have in Jesus. Come on. Oh, a sin and grief to bear. Just softly, just softly, just softly now. Oh, a privilege to carry just softly everything to God. Lift that hand, come on. Oh, what peace we offer for fit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Why? Oh, because we do not carry everything. But I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something right now. I got to tell you something now. You cannot pray. Sit down there. Choir, sit down. You cannot pray if the flesh is alive. You cannot pray if your flesh is not dead. Can I say it like this? Only the dead know how to pray. You understand what I just said? If you do, put your hands way up high. Yeah, because the living don't know how to pray. So what, what, what do you mean? I mean when the flesh is alive, the flesh does not know how to pray. The flesh only utters words. And when the flesh dies, the spirit comes alive. Then you really pray. So, 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 how, how do we kill the flesh? How does the flesh die? I'll tell you how. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and never faint so what is it it's waiting upon the Lord waiting kills the flesh do you know why oh Lord Oh, Lord, where are you? Oh, Lord. Five hours. Five hours last week. 
how would you like to pray for five hours? Weeping and tearing your heart apart. Five hours are on. He didn't show up. But here's what happened. I didn't realize it because I preached it many times. The longer you stay, the closer you get to him. You just don't know it. You just don't know it. Do you know when my soul absolutely felt liberty? Five hours later. What if I didn't pray five hours? You know the hardest thing to do is wait. I wasn't praying. I was waiting. And you know what I said to him? I said, you said... If we wait, our strength will return. I am not going till my strength comes back. That's what I said to him. I was willing. I was willing to stay 10 hours. 20 hours. I thought, dear God, if prayer can bring Peter out of prison, it can bring me out of prison. Sometimes you're so weak you can't pray, so you say, Lord, let somebody pray for me. Because I'm too weak to pray. But then you give up and say, I'm going to do it myself. You cannot, you cannot really pray till you surrender. Now listen to this. If any man come to me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, children, brothers, sisters. This is the part that is hard. How can you hate your daddy and mama? Children? Brothers? Well, I don't know about hating brothers. Maybe sometimes you're angry with them. Sisters? Yea, your own life. You cannot, cannot be my disciple. Lord, just a second. If any man come to me, and if that man doesn't hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers, his sisters, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Paul. Impossible. Whosoever doth not bear his cross, come after me, cannot be my disciple. How many want to be real Christians? Come on, how many of you want to be real Christians? Put your hands up high. That's the price. What does he mean? What does he mean by hating our family no 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 he's not telling you to go hate your, your parents for the same god said honor them they cannot come before him that's what it means you cannot put your parents ahead of the lord you cannot put your wife and children ahead of the lord and you cannot put your needs ahead of his needs he comes first Will you make that decision tonight? Please, for a minute, at the cross, at the cross. He put you first when he died. He didn't put himself first. He could have very easily given up and said, no, I'm not going to do it. I will not do it. Oh, thank God. Thank God he did not give up. He put me first. He put you first. Now it's time we put him first. If you really want to put him first in your life, stand up. Bring the candles, please. The 
Let's get ready for communion. Come on, gentlemen. Please come. Benny Hinn voices, come right here. Lift your hands and love him and tell him he's, he's number one in your life. Tell him that. Say, Jesus. Say it out loud, Jesus. Be all in all in my life. Be number one in my life. Dear Jesus, I want you to be all in all in my life. Minister, will you please minister to us? Sing it with them. Every instrument and 